Good evening. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Newcastle. It's September 26, 2018 meeting. As you can, just one note, as you can see this evening, there are only three members of the board here. So for each application that we hear, you will be, um, or it will be necessary for you to receive three affirmative votes to have your application approved. So if anyone feels that <clears throat> that is a circumstance that they don't want to um, endure, they can have their application postponed until next month when I assume we will, we will have our full um, uh, a board in, uh, present. Okay, Mr. Secretary. First case is Petrov. <coughs> Good evening, Ken Anderson with Grand Ole Architects. I represent uh, uh, the Petrovs. Um, the Petros are seeking a variance in F for FAR. Uh, they currently uh, have a house that's existing at 11,330, and we seek to add a pool house uh, to an existing pool area, um, which is 920 square feet. Uh, they previous, previously have had a, a few variances granted, one of which was for <coughs> The 11,330 to accommodate uh, finishing existing third floor attic space, uh, but prior prior to that, they the house itself is about a little over 10,000 square feet. Uh, the house is in a one-acre zone. Um, as you know, in a one-acre zone, the FAR uh, maxes out at uh, seven, 730, 700, 320, 7,320 square feet. Um, However, I believe in the one-acre zone, it's, it stops. Uh, <coughs> it stops at the acre 1.7 acres. Their lot is 10.2 um, acres, so it's a substantial lot. Just to give you an idea of its location, um, <coughs> this is Devo. This is 35 Devo. You come in here, and uh, it's pretty much uh, surrounded by uh, the backyards of a lot of houses. Um, the inside perimeter of this property is uh, very heavily uh, um, screened. If you wanna flip through here, this is the pool area we're talking about. All of the uh, surrounding areas have pretty densely vegetated uh, perimeters. This is um, the front of the yard, which we're not really near, but this is the tennis court, which is over in here in this area. This is more of the front. This is the side looking across here. This is where the pool house will go. And this, this represents the back, uh, closest neighbor to the pool, which is hundreds of feet away, but it's all, you can't even see that. The only house that does see this is, is uh, this neighbor here, which it's, it's his father. We did his house um, a, a, a year ago, and he purposely opened up the landscape a little bit so he can be closer and see his grandchildren. Um, uh, we also have already been to the ARB, and they've approved uh, uh, the aesthetics of what the house is. Well, let's go back a little bit okay. to your previous uh, um, applications. Have, is, have, has any of that work been done, or has any of it been done, or, or any or all, or none, or anything? Sometimes we, the, get these, we get these applications and we approve things and they don't get done. And understood. I was not the architect for any of the previous variances okay. that were granted. Um, the one that was granted for the attic was done. It was done. That okay. was, and that has a COO. And uh, the one that was granted for the previous pool house was actually uh, Granted, but never done. I remember that. And that was for enclosing the entire pool structure. Right. We're all only doing a pool house. Okay. So and the other, the other question I had was, it, we determined initially that it's a 10.2 acre lot. Yes. In a one acre zone, but it Correct. is not subdividable. Correct. From what I understand, is that still the case? I believe and so. And it will never be subdivided. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the, actually, Tony, the condition in the uh, previous approval um, was that the applicant 
And there are actually, it was done both times, and it was worded slightly differently both times. First, the first one, which was 2015, which, which granted then the approval for enclosing the pool area pool, I remember that. and a pool house. And you're saying they, that didn't, was not they didn't do either of those. Correct. Um, but that one, so I, I don't think they can ever go back and do it at this point because the time period has elapsed. Correct. That's where we're coming. No, from. that that wasn't what I was. I just wanted to verify the yeah, fact. Yeah, no, that no. That and, and the and the condition, one of the conditions was that the applicant or any future owner of this property will be required to return to this board for any required variances for the floor area ratio if they were to reduce the size of the property by subdividing it. That's the that's, way that was That's working. the one I was. The, one the second okay. time when we allowed them to do the attic and increase the FAR, the condition was this applicant or any future owner of this property will be required to return to this board for additional variances from the floor area ratio requirements in the event they want to subdivide the property in the future. So. I think what, what it should say, it should say two things. In the event they want to subdivide or reduce the size of the property yeah. in the future. And I think we had a lot of concern about that originally. Yeah, like, like. Okay. And then this picture, is that something that, is that the proposal? Correct. Yes. And the enclosure is then over the pool? That's a retractable enclosure. It's kind of a glorified pool cover. It, mm -hmm. It's not motorized or electric. It's, it just pushes open and closed. Is that included in the FAR? No, it's a, that's not included in the FAR. That's like a pool cover. It's the pool cover. You wouldn't have to include that in the FAR. It's the other, I mean, attachment slides and collapses. How did you arrive at the size of the pool house? And yes, how, how, did, how did you arrive at that size? What did you take into account? How did you come well, to that conclusion versus something that might be smaller, knowing that a variance is required? Right. Um, <clears throat> well, we, we went smaller than obviously what the previous application was, a, a lot smaller, almost half, more than half. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we have the minimum requirement of what they were looking for, which was um, uh, a, chain, a, a changing room, two bathrooms, and uh, a, an open area, up, which is a, a porch area, a shaded area. It's, it's, there's not a lot of large trees in this particular area, but there's a lot of large trees on the, on the property. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak this application? The record show there isn't. Okay. Uh, I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You'd like to make a motion? <coughs> I'll make a motion that the application of Alexei Petrov for the construction of a pool house requiring a variance, a FAR variance um, of 4,930 feet. And I'll clarify that by saying the allowed, the allowed FAR in that area is 7,320 feet, and the proposed FAR will be 12,250 feet. Can I ask you a question? If yeah. it was previously granted <clears throat> for that 11,330, do we have to ask for the 4,000, or is it just the 920? Uh, this is a legal question. I don't know the answer. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have a legal table. <laughs> yeah. Um, technically, so you received, a, you received a variance, so that lets you have a certain level. You yeah. actually only need the variance to the next. So it's 920. Which would be how many feet? 920 feet. You, so you only need the variance. You don't have to go back to square one. You don't have to go back to square one because the variance runs with the land, so that's already in the record. So it only needs a variance enough to cover the 920. Even if they never built it? No, no, they, they did. The, the, the one for the 11,000, sorry. It's confusing because they, they didn't happen sequentially. Okay. Uh, the 11,330 happened in... 2016 for the attic. Okay, that and, was on the third floor. Now I get but it. But that encompassed the existing 
large house. Right. So right. so that would be a smaller. Okay. So margin. now we're looking for 900 and 900. How much? 920. Square. 920 square feet. Okay. But you're right. If it was never built, that means the variance expired, right. and you'd have to start from square yeah, one. Because our usual yeah our usual uh, caveat is that you have. You know, uh, Six months to start in a year to finish, and if you exactly. don't do that, you're done. And if you don't do that, okay. then the variance Correct. vanishes. Okay. Correct. All right. So we'll, sorry, I'm okay with the 920. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> okay. And I'll, I'm, I move that we approve this for the following reasons. Um, this is a you know one acre zone. It's an unusually large piece of property, being 10.2 acres. It, uh, the the house sits well off the road, not visible from the road or from Almost any of the neighbors, only maybe one or two, can see what's going on. There's been nobody here that has come to speak against it. Um, the the granting of the variance will not create any undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood. Uh, there's really no other way to achieve this uh, desired end other than to grant the variance. Um, in in some cases this, this could be considered a substantial variance uh in this particular case i'm going to say it's not substantial because of the situation of the property size uh, and the location of uh, the uh, construction the buildings on the property um, there will be no adverse effect to the physical environment um, and these are not self-created hardships in that the uh, zoning laws have changed since the petros purchased the property and they must comply with them uh, not not because of their own fault. Um, and if you will have six months to start, one year to finish, we should grant. I want to put a caveat in there that... Um, Make that a condition. The condition that... How are we going to word this I'll, now? I'll read it to you again. Read it again because uh, I want to get it right. The applicant or any future owner of the property will be required to return to this board for additional variances from the floor area ratio requirements in the event they want to subdivide or reduce the size of the property in the future. Uh, well said, I'll agree to that. I second all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Have your very answer. Thanks very much. <clears throat> um, right on. Uh, I'm uh, co-owner of the property, representing myself. Um, so we are here for uh, variance uh, um, <clears throat> for addition. So basically the uh, 6410A front yard setback, uh, it's um, 40 meters is required, and we are at 36 uh, plus uh, for the proposed addition. Um, we are, the, basically, the house was grandfathered into this. Um, it was probably built um, before the rule came in. Uh, we already have an existing deck over there. Mm -hmm. So basically, what we are doing is converting that into a bedroom, so just with the increase in size of the family. So um, that's mm -hmm. why, uh, uh, so if I can approach, sure. I can. Sure. So, so basically, this this is the proposed addition. I'm sorry. If you could just bring sure. the microphone with you or okay. speak into the microphone, either one is fine, just so we um, capture it. So You can uh, slide that out and carry it if you like. Just pull it toward you. That's it. Good. Yeah. So um, the uh, shaded area over here is a new addition. Currently, we do have a deck over there. So basically, the proposal is to convert that into a bedroom. And uh, because, as I said, uh, when the house was built, um, it was a different set of rules. Uh, so we were asked to come and get a variance. Um, so is that to say that the the bedroom conversion mm -hmm. yep. does not extend no. out beyond where the, the port, current deck is? Current deck or port, yep. porch is today, yep. I see. Yep. Okay. Can, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. I'm a little confused about this application. Because you're asking for a four foot variance. Um, but if you need 40 feet, um, and, and the, uh, the over do we have to go to the, that was my question. Do we count the overhang? Sometimes we, we do, sometimes we don't. And it, it should have been a 32 foot variance. And eight, an eight foot, it needs eight feet to make this work. 
Um, needs 40 feet. He's required to have 40 feet. Right. If you look at the survey now, it shows 30 feet to the overhang. That was my question. Right. right. The overhangs are projections from the from the side of the house, and they're not included in the measurement. You're going to the foundation. So we don't have to consider the overhang. We don't have to include that. Yeah. This, is, this has always been a question because sometimes it's been in and sometimes it's been out. I, we have maximum projections that are allowed. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. This is within that dimension. So that, that we don't have to worry about that? Correct. Surveys are to the foundation, not to the appendages. Okay. So, it did so then we, what are we ending up with for the actual variance? Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. Because even on the revised application, it still says four feet. And we got tonight. Well, he's got it in two, two, two places now. I think if they intended to correct it down below in the red. Correct. But right. They okay. They didn't change. But you didn't change it up, up here. So this is this is wrong. It's eight feet. No problem. Okay. That's all the questions, questions I had. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application? Let the record show there isn't. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? No. no. Um, I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll make a motion. I move that the um, Pradhan uh, application for an eight foot uh, front yard variance for the construction of a bedroom uh, where today a deck exists um, uh, be approved for the following reasons. Um, this will not create an undesirable change in the uh, character of the neighborhood. Uh, the benefit cannot be sought by other means. Uh, the variance is not substantial. Uh, there will be no adverse impact on the physical environment. Um, and though um, self-created, this will allow the homeowner to um, um, uh, create more um, uh, sleeping space for um, his family. Um, you'll have six months to start and one year to complete. Um, and we will, um, there are no surveys that are required? There will be, yes. Yes. Uh, what, we're going to want a foundation survey. You're creating a new foundation? Uh, we'll have to put a new you foundation. Will, okay. yes. we'll, we'll need a foundation survey prior to framing. Okay. 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 And upon completion. Oh. Um, you need one on completion also? To... We will not. The foundation survey will give all the dimensions. That will not change your afterwards. Okay. For these reasons, I think we should approve the application. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Happy very Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I like that. Uh, John Warfield, Margaret Mullen. Good evening. Hi. Um, yeah, we're here for a variance because when the house was designed, it was at a certain elevation, and because of the backyard walkout, it had to be raised about five feet. When you raise it five feet, the stairs now go out or two, two and a half feet, something like that. So that's what we're looking for is the stairs. So that's the amount of the variance, two and a half feet? There's also an additional staircase you'd like to build. Yeah. We did not because we knew that would be outside the variance, outside of the permitted area. We didn't know on the other ones. Mr. Warfield's asking you for two variances for the existing staircases and one variance for the new staircase. Okay. So eight feet for the existing stairs, 18, 18 feet for the New stairs. No, Eighteen feet for the rear yard. Fifteen feet for the rear yard. I'm sorry. So existing, you need eight foot front yard, fifteen foot rear yard. Yeah, we, we do have variances already. 
but we're just extended beyond what those are. We have uh, nine point variances. Because you came to us before the house was built, yeah. and you had a, a little yeah. variances for, to get it on that piece of property. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. The corner of the garage, and then the steps, and then the front porch, and then the yes. So what you're talking about is unforeseen circumstances as the construction progressed. Yes, they made an adjustment on site, and right. I guess nobody thought about the physics. Okay. <laughs> Ge geometry has never been my best subject, so. <laughs> and high school was a long time ago, too, so. And as long as we're here, we're going to ask about that, that third staircase, which we, I said we did not build. It's got a silly little balcony there now. So that staircase is not yet constructed. Correct. It says proposed on the plan. I have photos if you'd like to see them, if that would be helpful. The patio is that's shown shown on your site plan. Is that not being done? Uh, the patio was adjusted. They made it square instead of round. Those were all permitted in the first variance. We don't have a problem. So it with says them. new patio and walk. The, but yeah. So I think I don't have a particularly good picture of the it's patio. Is that covered by the previous variance? Yes. So the staircase that's coming down came out a few extra feet because sorry, of the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And could you start by telling us your name? Sorry, I'm Margaret Mullen. Okay. I'm the other homeowner. Okay. Um, so the 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 in the photograph, the staircase that you see came out a couple of additional feet because it went up right. a couple of additional feet. Right. Where you see that balcony? Yes. We did not put that in because again, with the adjustment, it wasn't going to fit. I, I get, they didn't. The builder did not realize that it was going to need a variance. I would have been here six months ago. Um, it wasn't until after they did the as built that somebody realized that they were beyond in, in, in there okay. as well as the edge of, of this in front of the man door by the garage. So, so we should be granting a variance for the um, patio? For I, the, I can't for the... The, the, pad, the patio was included in the original variance. Okay. Okay, the, it, was, it was round. They Instead of making it round, they... And in fact, we, we made it square with less... To make it smaller. When you make it round or square before the application no, was the, approved the, or after? The, 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 it was approved as a round... Um, as a round patio, and we made it, it small. We made it smaller and made it square rather than rather than round. So we, we made it smaller. We didn't use the entire variance. You didn't use the full amount of the variance, Correct. but. And when you're referring to the patio, you're not referring to this upper deck. No. And the upper deck was built according to. The upper deck was built according to the plan. It was because the entire house was raised okay. up. The, we ended up okay. with more stairs. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application? Is the record show there isn't? Uh, I move that we close the public hearing. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion. Partly. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the application of uh, John and Margaret uh, Mullen, John Warfield and Margaret Mullen, uh, 8, Ho 8 Mohegan Drive for a front yard variance for existing stairs and two rear yard variances, one for the existing stairs and one for the proposed stairs. Um, the amount of the variance for the front yard is eight foot. Um, the amount for the variance for the existing stairs in the rear yard is 15 feet. And the amount for the variance for the new stairs in the rear yard will be 18 feet. Um, for, the vari uh, for the following reasons. Um, the applicant uh, has shown that the variances requested are necessary to for them to enjoy the um, existing structures on the house. Uh, the 
granting of the variance will not create an undesirable change or character of the neighborhood. No neighbors have appeared in uh, opposition. There's no other feasible, feasible method uh, is available to the applicant, which is likely to achieve the benefit being sought. The requested variances are uh, not substantial considering the nature of the improvement, which is stairs, um, and uh, their impact uh, to the property. Uh, the proposed variance will not have a, an adverse effect on the physical or environmental conditions of the property. Uh, well, possibly self-created this uh, hardship is not one that um, would <coughs> impair the applicant's application otherwise. Uh, for those reasons, um, I move that we approve the application. Uh, you have six, six months to start and a year to complete. Um, you need a survey. Something. I will need a survey, yes. Uh, a survey on completion. And that's it. Okay. I second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. You're welcome. Should I keep this there? Yes, yes, by all means. Thank you so much. More ribbon? Okay. This is Heather Boyingville. Hi. I'm Mary Scott, the architect. Um, this is Boyingville. Home is on Glen Terrace off Hardscrabble, but because it actually borders on Hardscrabble, it has two fronts um, Glen Terrace, and a very long one on Hardscrabble. So anything done basically on the back of the house requires a front yard variance. There's an existing family room now, which you can see in this aerial view, and a terrace. Our proposal is to increase the size of the family room over what is now a terrace, and then to build a deck on the side. And one of the reasons for that is they have this lovely stream running through the property. And really, this is the only area that is usable because this is a steep hill, this is a steep hill. And so opening this up for the expanded family room and then the deck will certainly add to the enjoyment of their property. Um, we need three variances. One is a reduction of, from 60 feet to 39 feet for the actual family room, from 60 feet to 40 feet for the deck, and from 60 feet to 46 feet for the stair. Family room, the 60 foot one, it said that's really the rear yard, but it's the front yard because of its hard scrap. Right, and there is, I mean, as you can see now, the, the existing family room is here. Mm -hmm. We're just making it larger. Right. So we're not, we're not changing the nonconformity, but it is a nonconformity. We also do require. Um, wetlands permit but I've been before them and we're going to get a wetlands permit for uh, building closer to the stream than 100 feet. So looking at the, the contours you're, you're below Hart's Crabble Road. Correct. Way pretty, below. Pretty decent. Yeah we're like in a bowl. <clears throat> yeah I'm looking at that. So you're not going to be visible from the road. Um, your nearest neighbor is where? Over here. Yeah, so that's. And they're up. Yeah, and if I know that area, it's pretty well screened with vegetation. Yeah, yes, they're up a right. steep, right? And yeah. well, all along the creek and yeah. along there. So screen, so screening wise, you're in good shape. <clears throat> Actually, you can see a little bit of that's their yeah. driveway. Okay, I see it. Very good. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application? The record shows there isn't.
Uh, I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I'll make a motion. <coughs> I move that the um, boy rhythm uh, application for three front yard variances for the construction of a family room and deck um, in the amounts of uh, 21 feet for the addition, 20 feet for the deck, and 14 feet for the deck stair be approved for the following reasons. Um, the, <clears throat> the property is such that um, the uh, construction um, uh, will be contained, um, um, not largely visible to uh, neighboring properties. Uh, there will be no undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Uh, the benefit uh, cannot be sought through other means. Uh, the variances um, uh, perhaps are, are uh, substantial, but um, again, given the layout of the property and the uh, elevation changes are reasonable, uh, the variance will not have an adverse impact on the physical environment, um, and though self-created will allow the uh, homeowner to um, enjoy the improvements. Um, you'll have six months to start, one year to complete. We'll need a uh, foundation survey prior to framing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Evan Barrens. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Matoka. Did I say it right? Ken is not here. Okay. We'll move on. Carvail. Good evening. Hi. Chris Slovenia, architect for Elise Carvail. Um, we're proposing a uh, relatively modest addition to the east of the existing house. Um, and asking for a front yard uh, setback variance, which is now 40 feet. However, the original house was built to a 30 foot setback. And they were also approved for an addition in uh, 1978 uh, at a 30 foot setback and subsequently was built. Um, and we're also asking for a small uh, port to go extension into the front yard setback. The uh, wording in the agenda was inaccurate in that the existing steps are there. So those are there. We're just proposing to build on top of it. Um, we did try the addition to the uh, to the north, and it was impractical for structural reasons. There's a slope, so it, was, uh, it would have been high out of the ground and uh, structure-wise and plan layout, and it was difficult, as well as hurting the windows on that side. Um, so we felt this was the most practical. At least has a very tasteful style, the natural wood shingles, which will be continued and so forth. And we made an effort to really uh, tie this, uh, the addition, the aesthetic in. As you can see, and I think you have the photos also on the streetscape, that the, uh, the neighbors have a similar setback. So the character of the neighborhood is the same. And it even appears maybe some are a bit closer. And they also have projecting features, porticos, and similar items. What is the, sure um, what's the purpose of the addition? It's to have a new, um, Elisa's bedroom is here, and this is a new uh, master bathroom, and below is a uh, study. She actually proposed to do the addition only um, upstairs, but recommended against having a cold floor underneath, and we decided then to do the whole envelope for heated space. Is there an existing master bathroom today that's being there is replaced? Not, that, that there's not so not. functionally that there was a need. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And so are there two variances you're asking for or just one? Um, in the sense that the port go, yes. Um, there is an existing small projection now. We just wanted to uh, get a little more front door cover. So what is the extent of the intrusion? Um, I have that on the site plan, I believe. 
of course, with the 30-foot setback, the, the entire house is non-conforming. So right. um, the um, portico projection, it's hard to read here. I believe it's three feet for the uh, columns and four feet for the, uh, it's only a floor plan. Three feet two to the face of the column and three feet eight to the roof. So you need a four foot variance for the portico. Um, well, three feet eight. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. If, okay. if the roof yes. line counts versus the column. Okay. And then you need <clears throat> rounded, rounded up nine feet for the addition? Yes. How do we get that? That's I didn't scale that. 29 feet to the house. Is it 29 feet to well, the house? Well, it is at that, line? but because of the arc of uh, Orchard Ridge Road, um, it would be similar. There's actually a six inch step back to the facade there. So it would be similar to 29 and change, or let's call it 30 feet to the face of that addition, although it recedes from the radius. So with nine feet would be. Uh, Close nine to ten feet. Make, make sure you I would go err on the side of I, the little I, I want to give you eleven feet because I don't want to. Okay. I don't want you to have to come back Thanks. because of because of a little curve like that. I it's appreciate gonna, it. I mean, I could scale it. I, I should have shown it here. I think you said that the the, uh, the existing structure <clears throat> is a legal non-conforming. Yes, you did. Okay. Was they changed the code after it was built? It appears, I'm not sure when the code was changed, but obviously the house was built at the 30 foot and the addition was built. That's correct. Okay. So no, the, you're, the, addition, you're, the addition is going to carry the line of the existing house without, and there's no jog that's going to bring it closer? Or yes, sir. No, it's, in, it's, in the, it, it's an extrusion of the existing. It's good, just going to keep on going. Okay, yeah. so you're this not is the six it. inch drop back here. And then, it keeps and then you're going to continue mm -hmm. that. Okay. If so. the addition were included in the original construction, you wouldn't be here. Correct. Probably not. No. <laughs> That's right. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application? Yes, please come forward. If you could please state your name sure. for the record. Um, my name is Cecilia Costigan, and I live right across the street um, from, uh, I don't know how to say that last name. Say that again. Caraveo. From Elise. Caraveo. Yeah. Okay. So um, first, I want to I want to say that I think this is beautiful. I want to start Thank out you. by saying that I think, mm -hmm. you know, I have no question regarding. I, I think it's just beautifully done, and it, it fits the uh, street we live on, and it certainly fits with your home. What um, and you did you answered my question about the portico, so I I don't have that. I have concerns, but you took care of okay. that, so I don't have any. Sure. But, the reality is, if I, I'm sorry, could you just. I, I'm sorry, did you need to respond to something? If you do, I need you to come up, speak into the microphone. Okay, sure. Please. What I wanted to say is that the portico is not the most important thing. What's really important to me is to have this bathroom. Okay. But if you okay. felt in any way that the portico would be some kind of deterrent to the neighborhood, then it's okay. Okay, I, I don't think that's well, no, where we are. Not at all. But no, that, no, I okay. just had a, I had a question related to the size. But you said it was going, the stairs are going to stay. I'm sorry, ma'am. Ma if you could speak oh, to us. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. okay. So okay. My, we want to we want to understand what it is. That okay. You so my my uh, concern was the the size of the portico. Okay. Okay. And the stairs and whether it would be coming out closer. No. It no, would be coming out closer to the street. Okay. Because the uh, the uh, where the stairs start at the house now it is kind of close to the street. Okay. And my concern was it would be even closer to the street, but that that was my last thing. That was a concern. Okay. But in, in the process of um, I'm sorry, could I just, just before you go on keep yeah. your thought? So where do you live in relation to the applicant? This is her house, and that's my house. Okay, right across and, the street. And so, do you feel, given what um, her architect has designed, mm -hmm. that that is different than <clears throat> other homes on the street? If anything, it's better. 
It's better. The portico okay. included. I won't tell me. It's very nice. Okay. It's, it's a, I, that's what I started out by saying that it's not my question at all. Okay. You know, I thought if it's going to turn out like that, it's, it's, it just is, I think it's beautifully done. And if it looks like that, um, she has had room on the side that she can do that. That, but that is, so it's fine. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I just want to be clear. Do, do, do you object to what she is proposing in terms of the portico? No. Okay. I do not because it was clarified by the uh, architect. Very good. Then okay. if you could just move on to your next okay, point. Okay, so Thank my, you. my uh, in, in the process of um, looking into the proposal, um, I asked at the town hall, I asked if they knew that um, that there was a um, Airbnb, Airbnb um, as part of the structure, and uh, the owner uh, rents out of Airbnb, mm -hmm. and so it was uh, determined that that was not something that anybody knew about. I'm not saying in any way that it was hidden because she has a very lovely um, uh, website, so I don't think she was trying to to hide anything. Okay. But that then, I had another question. I was wondering what about, what about, I don't know anything about Airbnbs and how many can you have and what ha in one house. Okay. And so um, I was told anybody, anyway by the town that, um, is that correct, there are no real regulations at this time, but they're not allowed, but there are no regulations. Well, there's a t there is a town code, okay, okay. that exists. I don't, I don't know, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what else you're going to say, so please okay. so finish your I, um, I wanted some, I wanted really some clarification about that. You know, it, it is it allowed or it's not allowed, and if it's not allowed, how do, how do we go about getting it allowed, and, and is it, I don't know, I don't understand, let's assume it's allowed. I don't understand, uh, is a person allowed to have one room in a house, just one room, or can they have more than one one room, that's, that's important because if it's one room, it's one thing. If, if uh, it's going to be, it's an existing room, but now we found out that it's actually uh, uh, maybe not licensed or whatever it's supposed to be. So I'm wondering if it's more, if more than one room would be allowed. You know, I, I believe there is room in the house for, for another bedroom. If more than one would be allowed, that would that may very well impact on uh, how the traffic of the area. Okay. So, but, but I guess my question is, so, nobody can seem to answer that question. What, well, what? We've got great answers for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, but, so, I'm glad I came. But, um, so what I, what I first want to do is separate what are two different issues, okay. okay? One relates to an application that's been made for improvements to a house, okay? Right. And that's um, something that the zoning board uh, evaluates and votes on as, okay. as you because you've been here you've you've heard uh, uh, we have been doing that um, so that's our jurisdiction uh, and that's what we are going to be concerned with here tonight at the same time I understand what you're what you're asking and and we have counsel and uh, our building inspector here and our building inspector is responsible for enforcement um, and so um, he's responsible for um, uh, enforcing the town code, um, and he would be responsible for issues as it relates to this. But I'm going to allow our council to give you a better um, answer than I've just given you. Okay, so okay. let me just say that I have sure. no objection to the, the addition. I think it looks beautiful. Okay. She's, um, uh, we don't know each other very well, you know, it's just a hello kind of thing sure. as you drive by, but okay. she seems like a very lovely neighbor. Is it a big wave or a little wave that you typically use? <laughs> okay, okay. It's a good wave. Okay, it, good. It's a good wave, good. And, uh, but I was concerned about, um, since it, ha it came up, that it, wait a minute now, it, it, is this allowed or it's not allowed, it is, if it okay. is allowed, can, I was, I'm what, concerned about that part of it. Okay, so, why don't we do this, why don't you sit next to your husband? And, and our council will um, uh, okay. explain this to you, okay? Okay. Okay? 
Yeah. Great, thank you. So the town does not have specific Airbnb regulations. This is a new thing municipalities are trying to address. Um, Newcastle's code does include a provision, I'm going to read it directly from the schedule of regulations. Permitted as an accessory use is the renting of not more than one bedroom in an owner-occupied one-family principal dwelling building to not more than one non-transient roomer or boarder, provided that such room shall be rented to the same occupant for a period of not less than one month. Shall not contain at least shall contain at least 100 square feet of floor area exclusive of closet space, and shall not have separate kitchen facilities other than a refrigerator. And further, provided that the availability of rented quarters in such dwelling shall not be advertised on the premises, and the entry of such dwelling and its design shall be shall be such that its exterior appearance will remain that of a one-family dwelling. So a daily Airbnb rental where you're renting your, a room in your single family home to a different individual every day is not permitted by the town code. That does not come into play here for the purposes of reviewing the five factors for the variance because her extension is not for Airbnb purposes, it's so that she can have a master bathroom. Um, when the building inspector you know, reviews the application and finds out that there's an existing violation, he can then um, pursue, you know, issue a notice of vi violation and go uh, that route. He can also revoke or suspend building permits if there's a violation. So if the property is being used in such a way that's not permitted by the town code, it, the building department will take, you know, there's various steps that they can take to address it. Um, if this is a concern and people are very interested in Airbnb regulation. This is something that they can come to the town board about. Um, but again, it is, it's new and municipalities across Westchester, uh, across the country, are trying to figure out how to best handle uh, these types of uses. So okay. stay tuned. Okay. Can, you, can you give us your definition of non-transient um, how, how do we look at that? What do we consider to be transient or non-transient? Sure. So, off the cuff, off the cuff, um, <laughs> non-transient. Non I, um, I don't know. Do you have more, big Tom, better experience with that? Someone that doesn't move frequently from place to place. No. Okay. So that, yeah, that, more that, of a permanent that just, resident. Okay. So that that just reinforces the fact that. Somebody has to be there for a month. Right. So this is okay. like a month, a month to month lease type of situation. Right. Okay. Right. right. So now, if in fact um, if Tony the applicant is is doing an, an Airbnb, um, does that affect the way we we um, view the uh, the the addition to the house? I mean, it's this this is good. This is a this is kind of a, a gray line for me. That if if the house is definitely a master bedroom and everything's no no problem, but if it's if it's a master bedroom to be rented out as a, a, a nightly basis or a weekend basis or something, um, how do we know that? Do we have to know that? Well, you can start by asking the applicant what the purpose of her of her addition is, um, and she can explain more. You know, if she says that the purpose is for her personal use and enjoyment, that's something that, you know, the board should accept and rely on the building department to pursue any other necessary enforcement methods if she is um, lying in some way or, or I don't know, lying's a little aggressive, but, you know, and, and Airbnb is also very easy to investigate. It's online. We can confirm whether or not she is indeed renting her home as an Airbnb, so it's not something she can really hide. It's public information, so we can all find it. So, so as a matter of, of clarification, could I ask the applicant now to explain the use of the, the addition and, and whether or not um, it, it will be incorporated as an Airbnb, or is that not permitted? Nope, you can ask that. Okay, so I'm asking that. Can you tell us how, how you intend to use this room and whether or not it will be used as an Airbnb? Uh, can you go up to the microphone, please? Absolutely. So is this for me or for you? I, I would like to address it as well, but I'd ask you the question. Okay. 
So this is my master bedroom. When I bought the house, I always knew that I was intending on increasing the size because the bedroom does not have its own bathroom. So I always knew that at some point, once I saved enough money, I would be up for that. Um, the, you know, so I ended up being able to be in that situation. It is, the, the, the addition is going to be off of my master bedroom. So I'll be able to finally take a bath and all of these things that I'm not able to do right now. Um, okay. okay, so thank you. Thank well, you. I just want to get that on the record. Thank you so okay. much. You want to if I may say, I've been in the house, and Elise, being French, and uh, she really has an incredible uh, interior environment that is obviously her private bedroom. Um, it's furnished uh, like a museum. It's, it's not meant for public use. And um, she, uh, this is just obviously a functional um, um, desire that she has to be next to that private space with the new thank master bath. You. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else we didn't hear from? Thank you. And and did you get the information that you were looking for? Oh, absolutely. I, okay. I didn't know my original original concern was before I saw the plans, I thought perhaps you were adding up, uh, adding a bedroom. But then when I saw the plans this morning, it said bathroom. And it was obvious that you were adding a bathroom for yourself. That was never important. OK, thank you. Uh, I move that we close the public hearing. Well, before we close. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Minor error on your application. Yes, sir. We're, it asked for total lot area square feet. You wrote down the required minimum amount rather than the actual square footage. You wrote down 11,250. You're actually 26,615. I'll have our secretary correct that if you'd like to look at it. Thanks. Yeah, and it's also duplicated on the site okay. plan, so but, I believe it's. Yeah, but she'll, she'll fix it on the app. Thank you. Okay. Now you can close. Okay. I move that we close public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion. All right, I'll make a motion that the uh, <clears throat> application of uh, Elise Car Caraveo for a uh, addition to her existing residence and for the uh, uh, covering of the uh, front port portico. The, the addition uh, requires a um, 11, I'm going to give you 11 foot variance. It's 40 foot required, and you're, you're going to propose 29. And, and I, th I think it's better if we do it that way because if you get in trouble on your final survey, you're going to have to come back to us. I don't want that to happen. Okay. And for the for the covered portico, it's required to have 40 feet, and you're having 623, so that'll be a 17 foot variance. Okay. Um, you, you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Uh, for the following reasons. Um, this is a legally existing non-conforming structure, uh, and any renovations or alterations to it will require a variance. Uh, the variance, will, granting the variance, will not create an undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood. Uh, there is no other benefit, no other, other uh, methods that could be used to achieve the benefit uh, requested. Um, this is not a substantial variance uh, because the existing house line will be continued. Uh, through the new addition, it will not come any closer to the uh, uh, front property line as, as, as existing at the present time. Uh, there will be no adverse effect visit to the physical environment of the neighborhood. Uh, this is not a self-created, well, in a way it's a self-created hardship because you didn't have to do the addition, but it's not self-created because it's a legally existing non-conforming and any work will uh, require a variance. Uh, if it's deemed to be self-created, the benefit to the homeowner will far outweigh any detriment to the town or the neighborhood. And um, you're going to need a foundation survey, I would assume. So you will need a foundation survey prior to framing. Um, this neighbor, strong life support. Oh, yes. Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. Uh, we do have a letter from uh, an adjacent neighbor uh, who strongly supports the project and has met with the uh, current homeowner and has gone over it and is very, very uh, much in favor of it. Um, and you'll have six months to start, one year to finish. Thanks. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Have your variance. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes. So, the previous applicant now is in transit here, and I actually missed. Will I, can I still be heard at some point? Yes, that's one of you. Uh, it was 16. How old? 
It was the one oh, just Matsuka? prior to this. Yes. Yeah, you want to do that now? Yeah, sure. We'll do you now. Will you? Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ken. Thank you very much. Hi, no problem. It. Uh, good evening, my name's uh, Thomas Haynes from Haynes Architecture. Uh, this evening I have just a, a example photos of the uh, subject property and the neighboring houses, in case you didn't get a chance to go by the property. Yeah. So again, we're 16 Hollow Oak Road. So tonight we are uh, proposing under this application a uh, covered porch at the front of an existing dwelling. Uh, currently the dwelling is conforming with a front yard setback of just over 40 feet, which is required. And we are requesting this evening a relief of five and a half feet for a front yard variance. Uh, the reason that the owners are um, requesting such variance is because um, Mr. and Mrs. Masuko are, are elderly. Um, Mr. Masuko is sort of failing, so to speak, and the covered porch is going to uh, function for two ways. First, the um, covered porch would provide um, shelter during inclement weather, rain and snow, when they're coming in out of the house because he's kind of getting a little bit immobile. Uh, and then secondly, it'll allow them the opportunity to sit on the front porch to enjoy the neighborhood and on the front part of the property as well, which is something that they had always thought about. And, um, and at this time, we're in front of you requesting um, said relief of the front variant. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have a question of our uh, building inspector. Do we need to include the steps in this variance or just the porch? Because if you include the steps, then you need a, you need a greater variance. We need to include the steps. I thought so. Yeah, yeah that's usually what we do. So you'll need, you'll need an eight foot variance instead. Correct. Okay. Good. We'll do it. That'll, that's what it is. Otherwise, I have a problem. Uh, I, I know you took these pictures and are, are showing us neighboring homes. What, in your estimation, are you showing us when you show us this? Just to show the character of the neighborhood. Real, pr primarily, I want to show you the front of their house to show that there's nothing covering, really, that they don't have any shelter and things. Okay. And okay. again, just to key in the neighbors. We right. usually do that when we present. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak this application? Let the record show there isn't. Move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'd like to make a motion. I'll make a motion that um, <clears throat> we approve the uh, application of Rosalie Matsuko of 16 Hollow Oak Road for a um, eight, eight, eight. eight foot front yard variance for the purpose of. Installing a covered front porch to an existing residence for the following reasons. Um, the applicant uh, has demonstrated that the uh, proposed alteration will be minimal and is required for the um, full enjoyment of the home by the uh, current owners. No neighbors have appeared written in opposition. The granting of the variance will not create an undesirable character or change, change the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. Uh, no other feasible method is available for the app to the applicant which is likely to achieve the benefit of being sought. The requested variance is not substantial and uh, the proposed variance will not have a adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental condition of the property. Um, the applicant's difficulty or hardship is not self-created. Uh, for those reasons, I move that we approve the application. Um, you have six months to start, a year to complete, and a uh, foundation survey. Foundation survey. Foundation survey. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very Happy much. I really appreciate your welcome. Okay. DiMartino. Is 
So we have two applications left to hear and three people in the room. We're together. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, good evening, good evening. Um, my name is Jason Drake. I'm a general contractor. I'm working for the DiMartinos. Um, Mr. DiMartino and Dr. DiMartino, apologize, I couldn't be here. It seems uh, Miss uh, Dr. DiMartino has been called to jury duty, and they're kind of scrambling to figure out their schedule with their kids and everything else. So I was going to be here either way to help answer any questions for, for Mr. DiMartino. So right now uh, we have a permit to do in a garage addition, which we're probably almost 70% complete with. What I'm here for is a, ver a setback variance for a generator at the rear yard. Um, we have a, an existing detached garage that sits pretty much on the, the back corner of the garage sits on the setback line right now. Um, we've looked at this, I've looked at this every which way um, to try to get it in a different location. One of the problems that we're running into is that the DiMartinos don't have a basement. The whole house sits on ledge and there's no easy access to get out of the house to run this generator line anywhere that's convenient. Um, so with the addition going on, we found a relatively easy and inexpensive way to, to utilize that addition and then run the gas line and the electrical supply line out behind the detached garage. Um, and of course, because of the requirements, the building code requirements for the generator having to be 10 feet off the house, it pushes me that much further into that rear yard setback. So there isn't the opportunity to put it for instance, in front of the garage as opposed to... Well, it's um, all parking area right now. It's parking, I see. I want to try to put it on the side of the addition that's going up, but that doesn't, that barely, it doesn't meet the requirements, especially when I start having to be 10 feet off the house. There's certainly a lot going on in this. It's weird, it's a huge lot. Right. Um, it just all sits on ledge. And there's no easy way to do it without incurring any huge costs or potentially lowering the value on the home by parking a generator up front or... What about this area over by the pool? That, why is that not a candidate, for instance? Well, that's one that's their septic, so it's going to be difficult. And it just, because the addition's right here and the mechanical room's relatively close, right. I can come up and over with my lines in this addition and go right back here mm -hmm. between the pool and then I'd have to excavate. There's there's great. Mike, ooh, sorry, Mike, with you? No, just yep. take it out and carry yep. it with you. There, there's great changes back there, it, okay. and it's a much bigger expense. Honestly, I'd kind of like to do it because I get to make more money, but I also have a responsibility to my client. Don't say that. We should strike that from the record. I have a responsibility to my client to do the to try to make a fiduciary decision, um, and also to try to set it back. You know, I mean, these things are so quiet now; you never really hear them anymore. Although. I also tell a lot of my clients that the best thing to hear in the middle of a power outage is your generator running. So uh, what property is located um, on, the, on the other side of the border from the generators can be located? So we need to be concerned about, so what's, yeah, what's behind their property? Where is the next neighbor? It is, and, and what screening it, exists on the property line that might... Oh, great questions. One is, I, I don't know. I can't see the house. It is so far set back. I don't know if there's even a house back there. Um, if it's a buildable lot, if it's just vacant land. It's also, I have natural rock ledge, a steep slope, a um, ton of... And I wouldn't characterize it as forest, but heavily wooded. So, so it's a so natural you, screen already. You're saying so, when you're, you're standing where the generator will located and you're looking in that direction you can't even at this point today I can't even see over the crest of the hill so there's uh, elevation yes sir and uh, yes sir any neighbors here uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application let the record show there isn't Another question. yes yep you're looking for a rear yard variant? Yes, sir. Um, 
Also, you've got side yard checked also. Is that a mistake, or why, why do we have this it, The way the property kind of clips that garage, I guess I'm not sure if it's rear or side. I guess it's kind of both. To me, it's more, it's more, well, so, it's more rear than it is we're side. We're looking to give you a variance for the generator. Yes, sir. We're not, we're not dealing with the garage. The Correct, because that is an existing the garage. The generator's in the rear it's yard. Plenty, plenty far off the side. You don't have to worry about that. If right. the board is interested, I pulled up a satellite image on my cell phone. If okay. you want to just take a quick look, you could see the amount of space. Oh, my arms are too short. There's I'm a sorry. vast area. I'll get on. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a very. Assuming the same the same view will exist in the winter time, then it's not a problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any structures. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. I just thought that was very interesting. Just don't tell my client. <laughs> so we're just we're just dealing with a rear yard variation. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we close public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Would like to make a motion. I make this motion that the application of uh, Charles and Brenda DiMartino for a rear yard variance in order to uh, install the propane generator, the variance amount to be um, 23 feet. 60 feet is required, and the proposed existing is 37. I'm giving you a little fudge factor yes, there. Okay. Uh, 23 foot variance. For the following reasons, uh, the, uh, this, the granting of the variance will not create an undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood uh, due to the construction of the existing building and it's all on ledge rock, there is really no other way or to achieve the benefit uh, of installing this generator other than the location chose by the uh, homeowner and, and builder. Um, this is not a substantial variance in this, in this particular instance. Uh, there will be no adverse effect to the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Um, again, it's, technically this is a self-created hardship. There may be other areas on the property to uh, install this generator, but in reality, this is the best location for aesthetics and for pr preservation of the property value, and um, installing it there, the benefit to the homeowner, it will far outweigh any perceived detriment to the uh, town or the uh, neighborhood. Um, the, you know, the large, this is a large piece of property, heavily wooded. Uh, the, there are no neighbors uh, within a reasonable distance uh, to be concerned with uh, in this uh, application. No neighbors have come to us to uh, speak either for or against the application. Um, and if you could give us a final survey uh, as to the placement of the generator and the pad, uh, we should grant. We'll give you six months to start and one year to finish. Thank you, sir. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Happy variance. Thank you very much. Well. 231 Sawmill River, LLC. So when did you stop speaking to your architect? I was managing my fantasy football team. I didn't know how appropriate that would be <laughs> if I was sitting next to <laughs> Just being honest with you. <laughs> Good evening. Michael Piccarello, I'm the architects. Representing Dr. 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 Jer Dr. Uh, Jeremy Tubbs. Um, uh, Dr. Tubbs owns uh, Millwood Animal Hospital. If you're all familiar with that, on Solomon River Road, next door to the building that houses uh, Rocky's Deli. Um, so um, he came to us to do an expansion of, his, of the building, um, primarily to give himself some more room to work within um, his, uh, his vet office. Um, the, obviously the concern here is that we are short three parking spaces. So there's never been a parking issue uh, before. Uh, he's not looking to expand his business, so he has four employees today and allow four employees when this is completed. So um, again, th there's never been an issue with parking. Um, have a leak that permitted the required uh, number of spaces now. No, um, because of a, you know, the dumpsters located in the front, and 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 quite honestly, the, um, the the front lot has never been striped. If you go out there now, it's not even striped. So um, no, we figure out where you know 
we're definitely in a, in a deficit in the front. Um, and there's no other way to make the parking work. We actually even looked at doing, uh, reconfiguring the parking lot to get gain more spaces, but it's not wide enough to do uh, you know, a 24 foot wide uh, uh, double aisle. So, um, so the, sh the short answer is no. Uh, currently it does not comply. Um, and again, because we're not, there's, there's no other way, there's no place to locate parking on site. And quite honestly, uh, there's, there isn't uh, a need for more parking. Um, they don't use the parking that, you know, if it's correct for me to say, they, they don't even use all the parking that they have now. I, every time I visited uh, the, uh, the, the office, uh, there's never been an issue with me finding parking. So, so you, you currently have seven spaces. Uh, I think there's currently there's uh, a six plus to yeah pl six plus the handicap the way the way the uh, Newcastle's uh, zoning uh, parking rules the handicap space for some you know again some strange reason doesn't count towards the number so it's the handicap is re as a requirement but it is is that is outside the 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 number of spaces required and so it's that six plus so we, we call that six plus one and the required number today is it'll be it'll be required to be have nine uh, 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 we're required to have, t with, with the expansion, we would be required to have 12. But with the reconfigured, we, uh, we're gonna move the dumpster to the back, um, to the back of the building, so it'll actually share um, with the, the, the carting service is gonna use the dumpster, uh, currently uses, uh, services the dumpster for Rocky's Deli, that, which is in the back. So that actually, that, that works out best for the, even the, the carting company to have the dumpster in the back. Um, and then we'll, we're going to end up having nine spaces in the front plus plus the handicapped. So we'll be at a deficit of three. But we'll again, all be in the front. All we'll be in the front. Yeah, there's, no, the, there's no other place to, to, to well, locate parking. I'll go on the plan in the back. It says asphalt parking area on your, on your site plan. Uh, it's currently a paved area. It's not a, it's not, it's, it's not a, it's not a parking space. Um, actually, I, mean, I, I can't see how you could even get there. I mean, looking at this thing, how, you, how would you get a vehicle back there? Um, I think in, in, in the past they might have used it for, for employee parking. Yeah. Um, I, I proposed that early on, but I was told that, that that's not permissible in, in, in Newcastle. Okay. In other towns, I've gotten away with that, but apparently not Newcastle. I, can, I can't use a stacked parking space as an employee space. So. Okay. Um, so there's no there's no other place to put parking um, behind the building. Um, is all steep slopes. Um, and I think you know the improvements to the building will be uh, not only help out um, uh, the the practice uh, to improve the practice, but it'll also actually we're gonna um, aesthetically change the building to improve it. What is the status of your application before the planning board? Uh, we are, we have uh, we're going back uh, next Tuesday. Um, we had uh, we had we received comments in August. We responded to those comments, and it, it, it looks like. And your application before them is for? For the site plan change, site, site plan approval, correct. So we've already responded to the comments. From what I understand, they're preparing a resolution. So it looks like it should be a favorable result on, on Tuesday. It's not conditioned on anything we do? I, I'm, sure, I'm sure it is, but um, because of the time of the year, and the, our, I asked them if I could come before you and ask for, for a variance, for the parking variance, in order to um, sort of expedite the process, knowing that most likely I'm going to need a, 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 a zoning variance for parking anyway. So I asked them if I could do this, so to, to, to come before you and it, it, while that process is going on simultaneously. So they, they were okay with that. Mr. Chairman, can I add one thing? This is an area variance, even though it's not your typical setback variance. Mm -hmm. um, however, under Seeker, it's not a listed action. However, we, we looked into it. Because it's under 4,000 square feet, it is a type 2 action. So no uh, Seeker review is necessary. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, no one in the audience let the record show to uh, speak to this application. Um, I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion. I move that we approve the application of 231 Sawmill River LLC. 
application to reduce the required number of parking spaces uh, in connection with the expansion of a, um, an animal hospital uh, from 11 spaces to 9 spaces plus a handicapped space for the following reasons. The requirement is 12. The requirement oh. is you're going to have... It's a th it, was, it was a deficit of three, so it's 12 to... Oh, it's 12. 12 required spaces, and the deficit, the variance will be to for the deficit of three, so that there will be um, nine spaces plus one handicap space provided uh, for the following reasons. Uh, the application applicant has uh, demonstrated that... Um, the proposed change is one that is um, required for his uh, continued use of the building and, and his property in the manner that is most suited to his expansion. Um, he's also demonstrated that um, the uh, The granting of the variance will not create an undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. No neighbors have appeared in or written in opposition. Uh, no other feasible method is available to the applicant which is likely to achieve the benefit being sought. The requested variances, um, I would not consider them substantial considering the uh, nature of the use and uh, the low volume of uh, uh, parking required by the applicant in the past. Uh, the proposed variance will not have an adverse effect on or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the property. And while the difficulty or hardship is self-created, uh, it is uh, not one that would outweigh the benefit being sought or the likelihood of um, any other adverse condition uh, with respect to the improvement. Uh, for those reasons, um, I move that we approve the application. Uh, six months to, uh, how long do you need to complete everything? Uh, assuming all goes well next week with planning and then building after that, uh, we should hopefully have a, uh, we should be able to start within six months. Six months to start and then a year to complete. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I move that the board approve or adopt the meeting minutes for the July 25th, 2018 meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're off.